Hi, and welcome to the Pulse Shift News. Guys, before we get started, as usual, big thanks to the few that support this channel, website, and of course, our observatory. Guys, uh, just a bit of a heads up on what's going on. We're still waiting for these battery carriers. Can you believe it? What I think's happened is uh, there's a UK supplier who I thought was going to deliver them in seven days for us. has now turned out to probably be one of these China um, deliveries. Uh, it's going to take probably three weeks, but um, we still haven't had the magnetometers come either. It's frustrating. I'm one of the world's most impatient people. I like to, you know, if I've got everything I need, I like to get it done and get on with it, you know, but it's just one of these things, guys. Um, what I wanted to talk about is the real aspect of what is taking place right now. You know, how, again, how often do we take things into consideration? of the reality that we are going for a magnetic pole reversal. You know, I think if NASA was honest, there'd be more people coming out from that uh, department, you know, screaming and shouting that how serious this event is. After all, we live on a planet which is in a hostile environment. You've got to really, really grasp the fact that we face lots and lots of risks. Um, you know, just to put it in perspective, you know, just take into consideration you know, the efforts uh, that those astronauts go to to stay on the International Space Station. You know, they have to provide their own oxygen, their own food. Uh, they have to deal with their own waste in a, uh, you know, a manner. And, you know, we take all this for granted on this planet. You know, there is water freely available. Um, there is plentiful oxygen and, you know, we're relatively protective with our own atmosphere and magnetosphere and magnetic poles. And, you know, you've only got to look at the moon to realise how hostile the environment we live in because there's no vegetation covering up all the potholes on the moon and the impact craters. You know, but there is still the same amount on this planet uh, right now. The only thing is we don't see them even from satellite images because of all the vegetation that covers them up. But trust me, there is no different from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the Moon with the reality of the impact craters. That's just one of the things we have to live with in the environment that we have to live in, in our solar system. There is always, you know, objects with, you know, massive masses and, you know, massive um, kinetic speeds that they're traveling at that can really severely you know ruin our day and um, it does happen guys as you can see we're over on pole shift news <clears throat> and we're looking at today's live images of the solar disk and you know it's almost void of sun spots at this moment we we are very much in a grand solar minimum. This is just one of the things our solar system is is going through at the moment. Uh, as a result of that, you know, the heliosphere, which is like an invisible bubble, will be shrinking on all the planets within it um, due to the low solar output of sunspots. And that allows more cosmic radiation in for us. You know, again, um, just compounding the problem of an Earth that is at this time as well decided to go through a magnetic reversal again the magnetosphere weakens more cosmic radiation you know compiles and enters our atmosphere as a result of that you know we have massive jet streams over a thousand miles in width and you know it puts it in perspective uh, with you know with um, a recent trip I just had um, to Lithuania uh, we managed to do the flight in just a little over two hours as opposed to a flight that normally lasts, you know, two and a half hours. And that was because we had a good tailwind behind us. And on the way back, of course, we was fighting this uh, wind head on. So it slowed the plane down and, you know, it took a little bit longer than, you know, it did to get there. And it just puts these things in perspective. This is just some of the aspects in which it affects ourselves on this planet. You know, there's going to come a time, guys, when every one of us, not just the ones that are travelling on aircraft, experience these um, extraordinary things. I mean, I think one of these um, airline 
companies recently broke broke a record for having a good tailwind and you know exceeded the uh, wind speed you know uh, across the range for that that particular airline just gives you an idea you know when you get a, a good strong jet stream and you're in it you know how fast you know you can go uh, with the thrust of those uh, jet engines that you've got on board You know, at the end of the day, guys, I'm not no pilot. I just know that when we was traveling at, you know, 37, 38,000 feet uh, over the weekend, looking down on the clouds, uh, there was two layers and we passed through both of them coming in back into land. And, you know, this is what we're facing. More cloud is more water vapor. And when you've got two layers, you know, it's gonna make it, uh, very difficult for the solar radiation to come into this planet and warm it up and that's why we're seeing even you know where I went in Lithuania um, you know record snow for the last 10 years you know this planet is in a process of cooling down we have passed um, you know the modern maximum with regards to sunspots and you know whilst we was in that modern maximum uh, for a good 20 25 years we was enjoying uh, beautiful climates you know summers that uh, we would all remember I'm sure but they've come to an end and you know what I'm telling you now guys is you know when I say this you know we are less than one sorry less than three percent of the people in the knowledge of what we talk about on this channel uh, we really are less than three percent and you know if you've if you had the uh, resources and you know the financial backing you could make a killing on the information that we're giving on this channel you really could you could buy futures in crops in countries that are probably not going to um, be affected as much as what these countries are in Europe right now and uh, in the United States over a certain uh, latitude and longitude you know <clears throat> Yeah, you have you have it in your hands, guys. You know uh, the information a good seven years in advance. Things are going to change in your lifetimes because of two things that are taking place. You know we talk about the grand solar minimum, and you know we're always referring to the period of time that is famous, uh, the the more the minimum, but and the Dalton minimum. But you know I think we're going to exceed these. Uh, times in our history I don't think that this is uh, going to be a cycle anything like we've seen before and you know as a result I think you know that la the last time uh, things like this was witnessed uh, was around 13,000 years ago or even well before that many many thousands of years before that probably you know when they entered the last glacial period one of the things I sometimes ponder is about our ancient civilizations like you know how they managed to lift a uh, you know many many thousand ton blocks in one go um, maybe they wasn't as primitive as what we uh, make them out to be I mean we still you know uh, have archaeologists and historians talking about you know yes they built the pyramids with copper chisels one of the weakest metals known to man you know and they go blunt very quick if that was the case but just look at what sort of materials they were working with diorite granite hardest materials on the planet and yet they managed to get the surfaces so perfectly straight and all that and you know it makes me wonder <clears throat> you know knowing what i know about you know, the corrosive uh, atmosphere that we live in and mainly we're talking about one of the most corrosive materials on the planet water uh, how long an iPhone would last and how for how long any of our technology with circuitry on board would last if we just chucked it into the rain or stopped using it and it became unusable and there are many reasons why it could become unusable what about if we never had any electricity okay you might think well we could convert to solar panels well yeah guys civilization probably would break down well before we all had the use of solar panels you know, in fact, there would be a big fight on our hands for those few people that do have solar panels because of how uh, needy the electricity would be from that source. Same as wind generators and things like that. You would always have pockets of people 
in times of crisis that knew how to build these things from scratch and you know it doesn't take much um, technology or knowledge to build a wind generator uh, but solar panels is a little bit different uh, you know you've got to get that uh, silicon in those fine layers and you've got to assemble the wires on the back of them in a certain way and you know it's, it's just um, if you if you're in a situation where you've got to try and create electricity for yourself I think you're going to go along the lines of rotating magnets on copper turnings but then you know how long will it be before copper turnings uh, or copper wire becomes extinct you know if there's no factories running with electricity or power then there's no copper wire for you to purchase you're going to have to salvage it from where you can probably old transformers and things like that just a few things to think about guys um, if you want to stay on top of things you know longer than the others but I think what will inevitably happen is probably what happened to our ancient civilizations because let's face it they built things much much greater than what we build today you know if you go to Dubai you've got the Butch Khalifa the tallest building in the world um, but it has a lifespan uh, it's built mainly out of concrete and for those of you that don't know it takes a hundred years for concrete to reach its maximum strength and then a hundred years after that it starts to decay so its peak is a hundred years and then a hundred years after that it starts to decay so 300 years the Butch Khalifa won't be even there um, for the reason that the concrete will be deteriorating um, it's just one of those things but compare that with the Grand Pyramid in Egypt there's nothing that is going to affect that because it was built out of um, limestone blocks I believe you know and even granite that was transported miles and miles away that thing is going to be there for all many thousands of years to come and it is probably one of the most greatest achievements by humans if it was built by humans ever to this day for that reason we don't build things in our wasteful uh, societies we don't build things to last like they did and you know it just um, makes me wonder how long an iPhone would last if we threw it out in the elements you know and that's based on you know my knowledge of you know these plastic chairs we all brought at one point for the garden you know after a few years of being out in the elements you know the plastic becomes um, brittle snaps um, well can you imagine uh, the plastics that our computers are built out of and the very very tiny uh, electrical surfaces how long they would last you know the, the whole phone probably would dissolve in a matter of years but guys you know getting back to the beginning of the video you know we live in a hostile environment massive impact craters we're lucky we haven't had you know a huge impact for many years on this planet and you know we've only got to look at the moon to know that these things happen all the time we might not see it because of the uh, vegetation grows over everything on the earth but you know the earth looks exactly like that moon does but that's just one aspect of the uh, threats that we face in the environment that we live we're lucky to have oxygen we're lucky to have liquid water and you know we are lucky to have an earth at the moment it will be a weakened magnetosphere and a moving magnetic pole and there is nothing to say that at the end of this reversal we will end up with a reversal and the reason why I say this is because there is a little white elephant in the room guys this time round the earth has taken an extra half a million years to go through a reversal as opposed to its average every 350 years every 350,000 years that is so there's something different about this reversal completely and that's why we can't compare it with all the others but we're faced with two problems we're faced possibly with a coming glacial period for sure you know if you look at any uh, scientific journals or books you will see that we're on the doorstep of that happening and it might not be a grand solar minimum it could easily be the entering of a new glacial period and that's not to say we can't survive glacial periods because we can we're still here 
you know, you know, mankind has been on this planet many thousands of years and probably experienced many, many glacial periods and interglacial periods. So we can survive, but there is no way on this earth seven billion people will survive a coming catastrophe if it happens quickly. You know, we just about provide the food on this planet for the seven billion people that are here right now. And we are at full chat with our agricultural production and you know you've only got to look at countries like China recently that you know have struggled through winters the last two winters at least uh, with you know temperatures that they've never experienced before for a great amount of time you know as a result you know thousands of cattle lost millions of tons of staple foods lost you know it's caused their governments to you know consider shutting down exports on these staples as a as a national uh, emergency probably not declared so you know when the rest of the uh, northern hemisphere starts to get affected europe america canada you name it you know what do we do then that's what we talk about on this channel guys uh, you know we present the you know the information to people well in advance and you know we have beat NASA in a couple of so you know uh, situations recently, and you know we'll continue doing what we do on this uh, channel, an observatory, and that is monitoring probably one of the main events humankind will ever experience. Uh, it was never recorded, and we just don't know what's going to happen during this event. But I, I would believe that there are plenty of people within these big organizations that would completely agree with everything I've said in this video you know the environment in which we live is hostile we are at threat of many things and you know we live in a day and age where at least you guys and me are aware of one of the rarest events that has ever came to mankind during this period of time so Guys, as soon as we get some, uh, you know, deliveries of equipment, you know, uh, we're just going to have to sit here twiggling our thumbs, I'm afraid, and hope that they do come within the next few days. And until then, you know, guys, um, I'm going to continue here, running the observatory, monitoring what I can and bringing whatever I need to to your attention, I feel, that you would need to know uh, during this time. Uh, there's a link down there if you want to support us. It's not mandatory, but it would be great if you would support us. You can do it on Patreon. Uh, there's 145, uh, 145 people. I nearly said, didn't I? 145,000 people supporting. I wish. <laughs> Guys, there's 147, 148 people supporting us out of the 21,000 subscribers that we have on the channel. And, you know, we have probably 6,000 unique visitors uh, to our website every week it'd be great if a few more would come on board and uh, you know back us and support us because you know at the end of the day Bill Gates started in a garage in his back garden and then changed everybody's life by inventing probably one of the first computers and you know you never know what's going to come from this little website because we are an inventive and creative uh, channel and observatory you know we are going to put um, a few of these organizations to shame with the level of budget that we have and what we achieve on it as always guys so you know the links are down there support us on PayPal or Patreon and you know there's nothing else to say other than you know guys I'll catch up with you in a few days and uh, maybe with a bit more news uh, hopefully with some of the components that have arrived and we'll be that little bit closer to getting them um, out to those destinations so guys have a great evening I'll say what I usually do bye for now